What's up guys, it's Josh here from Keep It Techie where I help you learn Linux and break into tech one command at a time. And in today's video, we're going to break down the chmod command. And that's short for change mode. It's the tool you use to change file permissions in Linux. And if you've ever seen that scary message, permissions denied while trying to run something, this is the command that helps you fix it. Now, before we jump in, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me keep bringing you these tutorials. So let's get to it. All right, let's talk about what chmod actually does. And let me go down and switch over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through what the command is actually about. And boom, I already have a terminal open. And one of the commands I always like to show you guys is the man command. And this will give you information about the chmod command or whatever command you're interested in learning. So let's go down and press enter. This will open up the manual for chmod. As you can see, the name means change file mode bits. Now, just to give you a little bit more details on Linux, every file and folder has permissions that control who can read, write, and execute it. And permissions are broken down into three groups, the owner, the group, and other. And most of the time, when you hear me say it, I say world. That means anybody else on the system can see those files if the permissions are set for that. Now the chmod command exists so you can adjust those permissions. You can decide, for example, whether a script should be executable or whether a file should only be readable but not writable. So in short, chmod is all about control. It lets you define who can do what with your files. Now hold up. Why should I care about the permissions? Let me give you a few real world scenarios. For one, running a script you wrote. By default, new scripts you create aren't executable. And if you want to run the script from the terminal, you'll need to give yourself executable permissions using the chmod command. Now, securing sensitive files. Maybe you have, I don't know, a password file or maybe some configuration files. You don't want every user on the system to read it. And with the chmod, you can restrict access. Now, something that I've showed you guys a bunch of times, and that's setting up web servers. A lot of web server files, if you're hosting a site, you might need to make sure certain files are readable by the web server, but not writable and to prevent someone from messing with those files. And then also another crucial thing you can use chmod for is collaborations. On multi-user systems, permissions help keep everyone from overwriting each other's work. So in other words, it's a balance between security and usability. Now let's hop back over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through a quick demo of using the command. All right, so let's start off with a couple simple commands. Like for instance, I wanna show you guys how to make something executable. So let's quit here. And then what I'm gonna do is just create a fake file. I'm gonna just call it myscript.shaw and press enter. And I'll just put something in there. I'm not actually writing a script. I'm just gonna put something in here so we can have something in the file. It doesn't matter because I'm not, I'm not gonna execute it. Or right, actually, let's go back into it right fast and we can echo and put some quotes in it and let's go on save it and cool. So right now our script file is not executable and I'll show you guys that right fast. If we just run ls-la and press enter, this will show you all the files that are in there and I probably shouldn't have put A. Let me go on and run it again and let's just put H. That way we can ignore all the hidden files. So boom, there we go. And as you can see, it's not executable. It'll have an X in here. And this is what I meant by those three different groups. So there's one group right here where it's read, write, and this is an execute. But right now it's turned off because this file is not executable. But that's the first group. This is the second group. And this is the third group. And right here is what type of file it is or what it actually is. Because in Linux, everything is a file. This is a designator. This lets the system know that this is a file with the dash. And then when it has a D right here at the front, that's letting the system know that it is a directory. So I just wanted to quickly explain that to you guys. But anyway, let's go down and make this thing executable. All you have to do is use chmod and then plus X and then specify your file. So we're basically adding execution to my script. This is one of the easiest ways to do it. So let's go down and press enter. And then if we run that ls-lh again, you'll see my script up here where we ran it the first time and now you should be able to see it has executable on it. So that's pretty simple, right? Now, let me create another file right fast. I'm gonna clear, let's use touch instead of nano this time. Let's go touch. Let's create a file called notes.txt and we'll put that in our home directory as well. And let me run the ls-l and that way we can see our file. This is our new file right here. But let's say we only want this file to be read only. Let me show you guys how to remove the write. So 
there's a simple way of doing that. You can just type chmod and then you use the minus and then what you want to minus. So we're going to minus the right on notes.txt, press enter. And let's run the ls-lh again. And you'll see that notes only has read permissions. So this removes the ability to modify that file, even for the file owner. Now, let me show you guys how to do the classic way of setting permissions. And I'll use that same file, but the classic way is a numeric method. And so it's a couple of numbers. It'll make sense once you see it, but chmod. And then let's say we want to do six, four, four. And so it's broken up into those three groups, just so you guys know four is for read only and this other four is for read only as well for the world though but this is the group and this is the world and this is the user so the user has read plus write and then let's just go on and use that notes file again and press enter and then we get ls lh press enter and you'll see our notes file has read and write on it now and that's for the owner because we specified six and then four, so it'll keep the right the same. And basically what that means is that this file is readable by everyone, but only the owner can edit it. Now, let me go down and move these files right fast. I wanna go down and move our, my script. Let's go down and move that into our documents directory. Let's go down and drop it in there. And then let's go my SHA. Let's go down and move that over there. And then also let's move our notes. I'm gonna go down and name it right fast. So let's go notes.txt and then, oh man, there we go. All right, and then up here, notes.txt. And let's go down and move it over there to our documents directory. And if we go at ls-lh, this will show us both of those files that we created or moved, and they should be under our documents directory. So let's go down and tab that out, press enter. Yeah, and there we go. And it kept those permissions that we set. Now, I wanted to show you guys how to use recursive mode. And so let's go down and clear right fast, but let's run the LS again. And boom, you see, we got our files in there. So let's say we want to update all the files within the documents directory. We could just specify that directory and it'll change the permissions for every file in that directory. So let's go chmod. And then the option is dash capital R and then let's just change them all to 755. And we specify our documents directory and press enter. And if we run that LS again on our documents directory, you'll see that they all have the same permissions. And basically seven is basically everything. So that's what the seven is for. So read, write, and execute. And then five is read and execute and read and execute. So that's why it's 755. Now let's CD to our documents directory right fast because I want to just uh, play around with a couple of files in there now that they're over there. Let's go documents, press center. Let's LS again. All right, cool. And so you don't always have to use numbers. You can use letters and symbols to make it more readable. Let me go down and show you guys how to do that. So let's go chmod. And then what we're gonna do is use our symbols user. So you basically put a U and then put equals. And then you can do, let's say read, write, execute which is already there but let's change it to just read and execute and then our group which is g equals and then let's do read and execute as well and then for the world or other we could just put let's do nothing so all you got to do is put the equal sign and nothing and so that will leave the world as no permission so hit my script and press enter and i will change those permissions for us as you can see up here this is what the permissions were so read, write, execute up here, read and execute, read and execute. So it should have only changed right here. This should have nothing there. And then here for our, it's read, write, execute. So let's go ls dash lh and press enter and boom. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So it removes our permissions for the world. It gives it read and execute and read and execute. So super cool, right? Now, let me show you guys something cool. So I'm gonna touch another file in here. So Let's go touch and let's create my script two and then my script three. And let's go down and press enter. It'll create both of those files for us. So with LS, you'll see those other two files that we created. Now, I just wanted to show you something that's super powerful by combining commands. And let me go down and clear right fast. And then let's run an LS as L H of our documents directory press center that way you can see all the files and their permissions now we use our find command i think i did a video on the find command but let's go with our documents directory you have to specify the directory you want to search and then we could go dash type because we want to look for a specific type which is a file 
and then dash name we can specify a name and what i'm gonna do is use a wildcard because what i want to do is make the changes to all of our sha files to have 750 and so that'll be exactly like this other one it'll just basically change this to read write execute and they'll be reading execute here and then zero so 750 but anyway let's specify our file right fast so all of our sha files or sha scripts they end with dot sha so that'll handle the wild core for us right there when it searches now we can tell it after that to e execute another command so all you got to do is put exec and then what we're going to do is use chmod and then 750 and we can do that for each one of them and i think it's a backslash and then a semicolon and that should close out our command so let's go down and press enter and that will go through and find every shelf in that documents directory and make those changes for us as you can see they all now have those permissions as you can see it excluded the text file so that's super cool all right before we wrap up let me go down and give you guys some quick tips for one don't slap 777 on everything and i know i didn't show you guys 777 but that will give permissions to pretty much everybody they will have read write and execute access and i know it's convenient but it's also a big security risk and also use the least privilege rule basically only give the minimum permissions needed for the file to work and also know your defaults new files usually get like 644 and new folders get 755 depending on your umass and you can always check with ls-l now also make sure you practice the symbolic versus the numeric way of actually making changes to your permissions obviously use whichever feels easier but get comfortable with both admins use both methods all the time and also test before you deploy especially on servers a bad chmod can break applications or expose sensitive files so be very careful when playing with this command so that's the chmod command in action it might feel intimidating at first but once you understand the logic of permissions it becomes second nature i encourage you to try the examples i showed today make a test file experiment with adding and removing permissions and really see how it works now of course if you have any questions or if you want me to cover related commands like ch own or umass don't drop a comment down below and of course if this video helped you out go to hit that like button subscribe to the keep it techie channel and share it with someone who's trying to learn linux thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace yo what's up y'all listen if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move let me tell you tech is where it's at i don't care where you're coming from whether you've got a degree a ged or just pure hustle there's room for you in this game you see tech is more than just keyboards and code it's solving problems creating opportunities and building the future you already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start it cares where you're willing to go you can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.